Good evening, fellow citizens. Last week was a historic week. We welcomed and honored our sprint sensation, 100 meters gold Olympian, Miss Julian Alfred. All St. Lucians, home and abroad, felt a sense of pride as the nation celebrated. Thank you, Julian, for being who you are and allowing the country to benefit from your stardom. On 1st October, our country will take another step in its evolution to continue to address the needs of the workers when the minimum livable wage of $1,131 per month or $6.52 per hour will become law. I would like to provide a historical perspective on the journey in search of a fair day's pay for a fair day's work for St. Lucia workers. The journey started in the 1930s following the economic depression of 1929. Back then, the Legislative Council enacted the Labor Minimum Wage Ordinance No. 5 of 1935 to establish a minimum wage for specific workers like the coal carriers. This was followed by amendments to the ordinance to align the quantum of work done to pay and to make special provisions for workers whose ability to work was affected by physical injuries, age, and infirmities. The enactment of laws to protect workers inspired the creation of the St. Lucian Cooperative Workers Union by Mr. Charles Augustine and Mr. R. G. Clark who was the first union president in 1939. In 1945, Sir George Charles, Mr. Olio Jabatis, and Mr. Emmanuel Springer had joined the SLWCU, mobilizing workers from different sectors to join the union. Seven years later, in 1952, the first comprehensive piece of legislation governing the establishment of minimum wages came into law under the Wages Council Ordinance No. 1 of 1952. It was the late Sir George Charles, during the 1950s, who actively embarked upon a policy of pro-worker legislation, followed by Sir John Compton between 1965 and 1970. In 1999, under the Dr. Kenny Anthony administration, the country witnessed far-reaching changes in the labor legislation. Among these changes were, one, the Equality of Opportunity in Employment Act, allowing for equal pay for men and women doing the same jobs. Two, Minimum Wage Act, allowing for the creation of the Minimum Wages Commission. Three, the right to trade union representation if supported by a majority in the workplace. Four, the exemption of income tax on service charges paid to hotel employees. The Minimum Wage Commission was appointed by the Minister of Labor by instrument dated 20th September 2022. The last legislated minimum wage order was in 1985. Previously, there was a minimum wage order cited instrument 2002 number 12 that legislated a minimum wage for construction workers. The commission set about this work under the chairmanship of Mr. Lawrence Poyot and engaged in a broad level of consultation with several stakeholders. The commission's work was guided by the adoption of methodologies recommended by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, and the International Labour Organization. In making its final recommendations to the minister, many key factors were considered, including the general level of wages in St. Lucia, the cost of living, the NIC contributions and benefits, the level of productivity and the impact on employment levels and the impact on attracting foreign investments and the protection of the workers. Historically, it has been the responsibility of previous labor governments and this government to secure fair pay for all workers. The Senusia Labor Party government 
has always recognized that work is an integral part of the human experience and therefore has an innate dignity. The work we do is not just about what we produce, but an expression of who we are. In recognizing the dignity of work, workers need to be paid to allow them to meet their very basic needs. I am pleased to learn that there was no formal objection from the St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce and the St. Lucia Hotel and Tourism Association found favor with the final recommendations of the Commission. This augurs well for the building of our nation. When employers are sufficiently socially conscious to stand in solidarity with workers at the lower income levels of the workforce. I implore employers to strengthen their solidarity by resisting any efforts to reduce levels of staffing where adjustments are to be made to bring wages in line with the minimum livable wage. What may appear to be cost savings at the level of your individual businesses may turn out to be more costly at the national level, resulting in false savings. I therefore encourage employers to help staff improve the level of productivity so that workers are always providing value for money. I call on employees, especially those who are the subject of these changes, to give their best in the exercise of their work duties. As a country, we need to improve our level of productivity if we are to remain competitive in the world. It is the sure and sustainable way of growing the solution economy in the long run. Improvement in productivity is a positive sum game. Employees, employers, and the country all benefit. I therefore implore all workers, together with their employers, to do more to improve the level of productivity in their respective businesses. I want to take this opportunity to thank Minister of Labor, Dr. Virginia Albert Poyot, staff of the Ministry of Labor, members of the Commission for the work they have done since the appointment of this Commission on August 1st, 2022. Their process of consultation was wide-ranging and effective. Let me also make special mention of the private sector in general for their understanding and participation in the process. October 1st, implementation of the minimum livable wage is a clear commitment on the part of my government to make the necessary interventions where market forces fail to address the minimum living standards of workers. The stability and strength of our nation is very dependent on the well-being of the vulnerable in our midst. As a socially conscious government, we remain faithful to the needs of people, ensuring that there is dignity in work and that workers can have a dignified existence by being able to take care of themselves and their families. Minimum wage, 1,131 monthly, or $6.52 per hour, does not include a payment of overtime, a share of service charge, a commission, bonus, or profit sharing. Allow me to end with a quote from the late Marcus Josiah Garvey. With confidence, you have won, even before you started. I thank you.